Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank. Recently I've been getting a lot of phone calls asking about how to configure the Canon 17 to 120 servo zoom with different cameras. So over the course of the next couple days and wardrobe changes, I'll be showing you how this lens can be configured with the most popular cameras of the day. And I'm going to start with the Sony FS7. I'm going to talk about the hardware configuration first. I have put a Metabones adapter on this camera because the native mount of the FS7 is E. So I have gone from E to EF mount and I'm using an EF mount 17 to 120. The lens can be delivered in EF or PL mount. I have the EF for this build. On the bottom of the FS7, I have put a shape uh, shoulder rig. This gives me 15 mil lightweight rods off the front and allows me to support the lens on the front. The rig also has a built-in shoulder pad and it interfaces with a traditional ENG uh, touch and go plate, allows us to go from shoulder to tripod very quickly. And on the back, I have 15 mil lightweight rods as well. I've added an extension to the FS7. This is a separate option uh, for this camera and this primarily allows us to uh, move signals in and out of the camera. Um, I want to concentrate on the Hiroshi on the back of it for today because this four pin Hiroshi allows us to have the functionality uh, interface with the lens. The connector that is on the servo zoom is a 12 pin Hiroshi. This is the traditional uh, connection you have on ENG lenses that go to ENG camcorders and allow you to zoom the the lens and also have uh, some metadata move through potentially and also record on off. So at, here at ABLE we have manufactured an adapter that goes from that 12 pin Hiroshi to the 4 pin Hiroshi that will connect to the extension. And what this allows us is two things. First we get our power to the lens so we can zoom using the rocker, but secondly we also have the ability to now do record on off to the camera. It's a really indispensable cable. It's a great option to have because it really utilizes the full potential of the lens. If you do not have the extension unit, the alternative would be to put a external battery on these 15 mil rods using a plate and to detap into the lens and power it that way. The only consideration to be mindful of with that is that in that situation you are providing power only to the lens. You are not going to have the capability to do record on off. In either option though, on the bottom of the hand grip we are able to use the multi-pin connector and use a standard Preston Canon ENG cable to a microforce. So we could have our handheld functionality and we could then go onto our tripod and use a traditional microforce setup for this build as well. I've added a EF mount 17 to 120 to my Canon C300 and I put a few pieces of uh, hardware in addition to accommodate the build. I put a airy base plate on the camera. This is giving me 15 mil lightweight spacing. This way I can support the lens at the front and I've carried the long rods through to the back. That allows me to put this plate on here from Anton Bauer. This is holding a uh, dionic battery on a gold mount with a D-tap at the top and this D-tap is going to a splitter box from Switchtronics. That is providing 8.4 volt to the camera body and another D-tap allows me to carry 12 volts to the lens for the servo zoom. This adapter cable, by the way, this is a rental lens from my uh, rental guys here in Burbank and they include the D-tap to Hiroshi 12 cable as standard in any kit rental or any lens rental from us. This way you could be able to power up the zoom from the camera body if the uh, mount accommodates it or you can use the D-tap as I am here for external power. You have all the capabilities that you would expect in an ENG build with this type of setup. In addition, we could also plug into the multi-connector on the bottom of the hand grip and put in a standard Preston cable for a microforce. This is the Canon ENG zoom cable for the microforce, which will give it the same kind of behavior you would expect with any other interface with a microforce. 
Nice addition to this on the C300 on the LCD panel here. It has communication between the lens and the camera, so it allows me to see what my focal length is on the lens. I've taken a PL mounted version of the 17 to 120 and put it onto the Alexa. Now there's two ways that I could power the uh, lens from the Alexa. And the first way is with a splitter cable that Able Cine manufactures. This is taking the Hiroshi from the hand grip on the lens and pointing it into my splitter. And it goes to a Fisher 3 and a Fisher 2 connector. The Fisher 2 is going to give me power so I can have the servo zoom active. And the three pin Fisher is going to give me the capability of doing record on off from the hand grip. Alternatively, what I could do is unplug this and at the bottom of the PL mounted lens, there's a module with a Hiroshi connector on it. I could plug the Hiroshi from the hand grip back into the Hiroshi on the bottom of the lens. And what that is doing now, it is routing the 12 volt power I would get from the pin connectors on the PL mount itself and route it to the servo. Now that will make the servo zoom active. It will not allow me to do record on off. Configuring the 17 to 120 to the area of Mira could not be any easier. And that's because we simply take the 12 pin Hiroshi from the hand grip on the lens and plug it into the 12 pin on the lens mount of the Amira. In addition, we have communication link between the PL mount of the lens and the PL mount of the camera. So the hand grip through the 12 pin Hiroshi is supplying power to the servo and it's also allowing us to do record on off to our CFAS card. And the communication link in the PL mount is sending metadata to the recordings. So for every clip that you do with this lens, with this camera, you can go into a clip metadata viewer and see the serial number and the ID of the lens. I have the 17 to 120 in PL mount mounted to the F55. There's a couple of steps I have to go through in order to get communication between the camera and the lens. The PL mount on the F5 and 55 have a multi-pin contact, which allows me to carry power and metadata from the lens to the camera. The first step in the process is I have to take the 12 pin Hiroshi cable off the hand grip and plug it into the module on the bottom of the lens. This is unique to the PL mounted lenses. So if you see this cutaway, you'll notice that there's the port and I simply plug this in. And now what that's going to allow me to do is have communication between the PL port and the lens. The next step is I have to go into camera menus and turn on that functionality. I'm going to open up menus, go into the camera set, and I'm going to go to the bottom and I have lens interface, I'm going to select that. And I'm going to select type C because I have all the communication and power going through the PL mount. This is what I'm going to choose. If I uh, wasn't getting power through the PL port for the lens, I would use type C plus 12 pin. But because everything's going through the PL port, I am going to choose type C. And now when I close my menu, you'll notice on the upper left-hand corner, uh, now I now have footage, stop, and zoom. So if I roll my focus, you can see there it goes. And I'm going to turn the iris, there it goes. The zoom uses a traditional value system that works with uh, servo zooms on camera pedestal rigs. So it's not going to show you the actual focal length that you're set at, it's going to use a scale of 0 to 99 to show you the full range of the zoom. Now that you have all these components uh, hooked up and set up, you now are free to go ahead and use the uh, lens on the camera, and you also have record on off capability. That concludes our survey of cameras using the Canon Servo Zoom. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.